Plays hitting sixth, Billy Doran in seventh spot, Carmelo Martinez in left field. During the catch and hitting eighth, Jeff Reed. And on the mound during the pitching, hitting ninth, Jose Rio. On the mound for the Giants tonight is rookie right-hander Paul McClellan. He's making his fifth Major League start. He had a no decision, his last outing, and a giant 4-3 win. And the first pitch thrown, Barry Larkin pops it up on the infield. So one pitch, one out, and this game is underway. Paul McClellan is not a stranger to the Reds, Marty. That he pitched a complete ball game against him in his only start, or first time he saw him in Riverfront. Robbie Thompson catching Barry Larkin's pop-up. That's the total to date for the caring program for children. The figure that Barry will shoot, be shooting at the next time he comes up, $73,600. Thanks to Crest, Cellular One, Barry Larkin, and of course, Community Mutual. So Larkin is gone, and here is center fielder Billy Hatcher in there for a strike. This road trip has been anything but successful. The Reds have lost four out of the first six games played. Two out of three in San Diego, two out of three in Los Angeles. They're hoping that uh, this four-day stopover will be a bit more productive. And, of course, uh, in the ten previous games between the two teams this season, the Reds have won six of them. So they have the winning edge so far. One ball, two strikes on the Hatcher foulback. Well, the young man is... Taking right up where he left off last time, Marty. Uh, we saw him at Riverfront, and all he did was throw strikes. He got ahead of the hitters with his split finger and came in with the fastball to waste, and uh, he had eight runs to play with. One ball, two strikes. Hatcher at the plate, and that one's out of play. He'll be followed here in the first inning by Hal Morse. Bob Davidson, our plate umpire at first base, Jerry Lane at second, Charlie Relaford, and over at third, Jerry Davis. That's all for Hatcher, and that looked like the split finger that got him. It really exploded, too. He really made a nice pitch of that one. You got to hit him down two strikes. So we'll take a look at his last pitch. Watch this ball go down. The bottom just falls out of it. I'll tell you, he's got a good one. Well, they got the master here teaching him. No kiss. The popularized the pitch without any question whatsoever, and, and giant manager Roger Craig and of course, when they write the story of the 1991 season, whether they come back and win this division or not, it's certainly going to be a, a year that started off very badly but ended on a very, very impressive note, given the turnaround of this ball club since it was 17 games under 500 at one point. And going into play tonight, one under, uh, but only because they dropped two out of three in the series that preceded this one against the Atlanta Braves. One ball, one strike. And Marty, you know, we were talking about how great the giant hitting has been, but their pitches have been outstanding, too. They've allowed just, uh, in the last 24 games, they've only allowed uh, 2.87 ERA. So, man, they've pitched some baseball. One ball, one strike. Morris, his second straight game back after being sidelined with a sore shoulder. Hal had a base hit and four times up in the 4-1 loss at Dodger Stadium last night. One ball, two strikes. McClellan going for the one, two, three first inning as he checks in with battery mate Kurt Manwaring. Just got a piece of it, not a strikeout. Contact made by Morris, a foul ball. Marty, that was a split finger again. On the outside part of the plate, it just explodes and goes straight down. Well, you can pretty much look for it from this guy. If he gets ahead in the count, you're going to see split finger fastballs. And of course, uh, if he's got a good one on a given night, which he's certainly shown some good ones here in the first inning, you could have a rough, rough time. Hit well to left field, but right at Mitchell. So the Reds go out in order. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on after a half. Nothing after a half inning of baseball. The Reds go out in order, and now the Reds getting ready to have at it defensively against the Giants and of course their skipper right there Roger Craig who's done an outstanding job for this ball club and uh, trying to bring them back from a long long deficit trying to get back into first class contention of the National League West let's take a look at their Toyota starting lineup all right leading off playing center field Willie McGee in the second spot playing second Robbie Thompson at first base hitting third Will Clark Batting cleanup in left field, Kevin Mitchell. Playing third, hitting fifth, Matt Williams. In right field in the sixth spot, Kevin Bass. Doing the catching, hitting seventh, Kurt Manwaring. At short seven, the eighth spot, Jose Uribe. And the pitcher, Paul McClellan, in the ninth spot. Tonight on the mound for the Reds, it's Jose Rio. He's won seven of his last eight decisions over 13 starts. His seven-game winning streak ended last Saturday night in San Diego with a one-to-nothing loss. 
Rio is 2-1 in his last four starts. Is coming off the disabled list July 25th. The Reds have scored a total of four runs in Jose's three losses this season. And he goes to work on Willie McGee and quickly down on a swinging strike. Willie in the lineup tonight simply because they're giving Darren Lewis a, a bit of a rest. A young rookie who's done such an outstanding job for him since coming up from Phoenix. And McGee behind 0-2. Willie spending time on the disabled list and since coming off in 15 games has really not swung the bat well at all. Batting only 220. 11 hits in 50 times up. And six out of his last 44. And that pitch backs him off the plate of ball. Boy, the first night back to Marty, remember he opened against us in Riverfront and he had a perfect night. He had four hits and came back the first two times up the next night and had a couple of hits and has really has really tailed off since that time. Lost his bat but made contact. The foul ball keeps the count at one ball and two strikes. Boy, that's going to be a nice problem for a manager to have. And trying to work bats in the lineup. You figure that the young man that they brought over here that came from Oakland, boy, he's done a job for them in center field. While we were in the commercial break, we have been informed, and I said a few days ago that uh, Al Rosen would let, let the grass grow under his feet, and he's not done that. He signed Tommy Herr, who was uh, let go a few days ago by the New York Mets. He has brought her in uh, through the remainder of this season. And, of course, bringing a guy to this ball club with, that knows what winning is all about on some fine Cardinal ball clubs that uh, appeared a number of times in postseason play, and he will be in uniform and available for usage if Roger Craig deems necessary beginning with a night game here tomorrow night. So Tommy Herr has been signed by the Giants and I think if they get closer than they are right now you're going to see him do some other things. That's all for McGee as Jose starts well with a strikeout. Good start. Robbie Thompson steps in. I, I was talking with Steve McCaddy who does some work for ESPN a, a former uh, Oakland player pitcher back in the late 70s and early 80s and and talking about when Jose Rijo was with that ball club and and how truly fouled up that they they had him trying to make him into something that he couldn't be and uh, he said a lot of us knew back then that given the right set of circumstances in the right environment and, and situation this guy could emerge as an outstanding pitcher and uh, I don't think there's much question but that has happened. Boy, there's no question, Marty. His ball game over the weekend, he had a chance to win and he should have. So uh, he could be eight straight. Yeah, he lost one nothing in San Diego last Saturday night. Ahead on Thompson, a ball, two strikes. You know, you mentioned Marty the trouble that Willie McGee's had since he's got back in a regular lineup. Uh, we talked about all the offense that the Giants supply. This is another one of their hitters that struggled a little bit. Although he's got some pop 14 home runs on the year you make a mistake and he can hit it out on you and you're talking about the uh, the warm up really to that awesome trio of Will Clark and Kevin Mitchell and Matt Williams. What a show Will Clark put on here yesterday against the break like two triples and a double started the first <laughs> inning. Now well, he's a man on deck will the thrill to follow Robbie Thompson Rio dealing and missing two and two. Bobby, 29 years old, five years in the major leagues, all with the Giants, of course, out of West Palm Beach. And a fella, and you've heard us tell the story before how that spring five years ago, and he was a long shot at best to make the ball club. Roger Craig told him early in spring training, son, you're going to get a chance to play, and you will dictate whether or not you make this ball club. He got a chance to play. He made the most of it. The more he played, the more productive he became all during the spring. Lo and behold, he opened the year, and he was a starting second baseman and has never looked back since then. So it can happen. Three balls, two strikes. You know how impressive this has been for the Giants, this stretch that they've been on? They have picked up 11 ball games on the Reds since the All-Star break. What, seven or seven and a half on the Dodgers, something like that? Seven and a half. That should be the second out straight away and shallow and Carmelo is under for out number two. Giants have won 14 of their last 16 games in the row before they finally lost to the Atlanta Braves. There's a man. He's a leader in the National League. While Mr. Fielder has reached the 100 runs batted in mark over in the American League for the Detroit Tigers. Seems almost unbelievable. Well, he's putting back to back years, isn't he? Yes. 
If Rio can get out of this inning unscathed, he will have made a giant stride toward possibly winning because the first inning has been a real problem. Nine of his 19 starts, he has been scored on nine times in his 19 starts in the first inning. Marty, he looks like he's got a good slider. Yep. He's really had some good pitches, swung at and missed pretty good here first inning. And the 1-1 pitch. Sabo chasing, but it's out of play. Atlanta played and lost today, by the way, and those standings that you saw at the top of our telecast reflected that fact. They were shut out in San Diego, one to nothing. The second straight one nothing complete game for Padres right-hander Greg Harris. He was a man who beat Rio last Saturday night. So as we discussed in Los Angeles, while the Dodgers, beginning with the Red Series on Monday night, had started a string of 18 out of 23 at home, the Atlanta Braves, beginning the series here last Monday night, were starting a string of 20 of 27 on the road. They won the first two, beating the Giants. They were a loser, Atlanta was yesterday, and they lost today in San Diego. And that is hit well to right, down the line, and a foul ball. Wow. Watch this. Perfect and swing. Absolutely as pretty a swing as there is in the game of baseball. Textbook. Full count. I'll make that two and two. Two balls, two strikes. I understand that win today was Greg Harris, one nothing. Uh, he's the man that shut Rio out, one nothing. Two back to backs for him, one nothing. Had one complete game in his major league career prior to his uh, complete game one over Rio last Saturday night and comes back and duplicates that feat in beating John Smoltz, who has been pitching sensationally lately for the Atlanta Braves. Do you think his two month absence from the Padre lineup had some effect on where they are? I would say so. Strike recall. Off speed pitch, and Will will not offer any argument. We've completed one. The Reds and the Giants, scoreless. Corliss as we go to the top of the second inning and Paul O'Neill jumps on Paul McClellan's first pitch and grounds quickly to Will Clark. We saw Larkin jump on his first pitch and pop up to Thompson to begin the game and O'Neill grounds out to Clark one pitch one out. This copyrighted telecast is presented courtesy of Multimedia Entertainment Incorporated by the authority of the Cincinnati Reds and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and a publication reproduction transmission and or other use of the pictures descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds is prohibited. Chris Sabo got the night off last night but back in the lineup for this one. To show you what Roger Craig has done with his pitching staff Marty this is the 18th different pitcher that Rogers employed this summer. The man has been considered a master for a number of years now in his sixth year as manager of the San Francisco Giants and just a real nice guy. A fellow who began his career with the Brooklyn Dodgers had some good years for that club. The, he and a fellow by the name of Don Besson came up about the same time back in the 50s with a, an awfully good Dodger ball club back then operating of course out of Ebbets Field. Roger spent some awfully lonely, lonely years pitching for that Met Club yep. and the Polo Grounds. Uh, the old adage he went from the penthouse to the outhouse, boy, I'm telling you. He was a 20 game loser, wasn't he? A year or two, a back to back 20 lost seasons while with the expansion New York Mets. But he's a man who was a pitcher but understands and knows really how to manipulate a pitching staff. And uh, you might say, well, if he was a pitcher, that that's automatic. It goes with that. Not so. There's some guys who were pitchers in the major leagues in their careers and uh, don't really have the grasp of how to handle a pitching staff as a major league manager that Roger Craig does. I remember playing with Roger. He was a teammate of mine with the Reds back in the late 60s and uh, he had pitched for the Mets before that and there was a nightclub in Chicago on Rush Street called the Losers and we used to walk past him. He said he hated to pass it because he had his picture to win that <laughs> every week. Loser of the week. <laughs> Roger Craig. 2-2 two, two the count on Sabo. Whoa, he went. And they ring him up. Bob Davidson said he did, and Chris didn't agree with the call, but Credit McClellan with a second strikeout. Well, we'll let the folks at home make a decision. 
look like he checked his swing. Oh, oh, here we go, boy. He's upset. He's really not done a whole lot of that this year. He better be real careful because he's working on Bob Davidson at the moment. He was ejected in the game in L.A. and uh, a bit irate. It's really strange, Marty. Says Chris had his 14-game hitting streak stopped. Uh, he's been struggling. Up yes, he has. Here's a guy that's really been struggling, Billy Doran, batting 284 at the moment, but he was up around the 300 mark. Billy had a real good series in San Diego, but boy, he sure had troubles in L.A. As did most of the rest of his teammates. Yeah. Well, it's pretty good reason for yeah. it, I guess. That pitching staff. You're not kidding. One ball, two strikes. Nothing, nothing here in the top of the second. Reds begin the night eight and a half games back, four under 500. Giants seven back, and that's all for Doran. And Billy looked like, uh, I tell you what, his back looks like it's bothering him. Reds are up when the Reds take on the Mets. The 1991 team picture is brought to you by Super Pretzel. The same soft pretzel that you get at Riverfront is also available in your grocer's freezer. Super Pretzel team picture day, August the 31st. Kevin Mitchell settles in to begin the second inning for the San Francisco Giants. A Reds fan or two possibly sitting there beating up on those peanuts and enjoying the action. Yes, it is breezy. Yes, it is cool. Standard operating weather here at the stick. Mitchell has also spent time on the disabled list this season. They say the home run he hit yesterday in the first inning. A breaking ball away that completely fooled him. And he just flicked the bat out with one hand, and that bad boy cleared the left field fence with no problem. I tell you what, Marty, I think he's proven over the years he's one of the stronger people in this league. Uh, he can get fooled and hit balls out of here one hand. Yeah. He's something, boy, I'll tell you. Only 29 years old. He's got a bunch of productive years ahead of him, I'll tell you, if he can stay healthy. Two and two. Well, it brought to mind uh, the last home stand with the Giants at Riverfront, the ball that he hit off Randy Myers. He almost hit it out of the mitt to yep. right field. 2-2, Rio dealing. And he got him. Strike three, and Jose picks up his third strikeout. Boy, there's that hard slider again. He's made some beautiful pitches with that. Watch his slide away from him. Nipped him right on the corner. Nothing beats the excitement of Cincinnati Reds baseball, and when enjoying the game, nothing beats the king of beer. So clean, crisp, and cold, nothing beats a bud. So he's gone through two-thirds of the big three. Strike and Clark out looking to end the first, fanning Mitchell to kick off a second, and now goes to work on the final member of the trio and Matt Williams. They sat him down yesterday, giving him a day off, and uh, at a time that Matt is really not swinging the bat all that well. But boy, what a devastating power hitter this young man is, as you can well see. While you don't see the other two, Clark and, and Mitchell, they are hanging around on the fringes with 23 home runs each and and uh, and Williams with 24. Quite an imposing trio. Probably the most impressive in baseball. He's gone. Got him on a bad ball. Another breaking ball. That slider. Uh, boy, he's staying with it right now because he's got a beauty. Same pitch he got Mitchell with. Look at this. Bad ball away. Might strike out 51 tonight at the rate he's going. Yeah, I'm for it. It may, <laughs> it may take it to the trouble we've had scoring runs. Here's Kevin Bass, a big three plus one, as we talked about in the open of the telecast. And uh, while the numbers are not eye popping in the same vein as Clark and Mitchell and Williams, nevertheless, has been swinging the bat much, much better of late. And has hurt the Reds with a couple of home runs, along with a season's batting average off Reds pitching. A 342. Well, I'll tell you what, with the arrival of that Darren Lewis, this outfield, it's really created a dilemma for Roger what to do with Kevin Bay. Well, it's interesting. Uh, there was some talk sometime back, not, not all that long, a week or two ago, about the possibility of moving Kevin Mitchell from left field to third base, moving Matt Williams from third to short. That would enable the San Francisco manager to then play Bass and McGee and Lewis in the outfield. It did not or was not received very warmly by the the two principals involved that being Matt Williams and Kevin Mitchell although Williams really said he wouldn't mind all that much of possibly moving over to short 
but uh, Mitchell was rather cool about the idea of coming in from left field to play third and and Roger said he said hey once we got a lead uh, you know we'd move things around and get people back into the positions that they're comfortable in but uh, I guess a lot of managers around the league were breathing a sigh of relief because if you make that move you don't have any easy <laughs> outs in that batting order <laughs> not one well I can understand Kevin's problem when 90 feet pretty close to that baseball oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah Two to the count on Bass, two out. And Riho full. What are some names off this pitching staff that you've seen here for several years is missing too? They look the Ruschels and other mm -hmm. causes. They dropped Donnie Robinson out of the rotation. They're going with a four-man rotation right now. Foul ball. The Reds are seeing the four who are quote unquote temporarily in the four man rotation for San Francisco and that they're getting McClellan tonight they're getting uh, Bud Black tomorrow night John Burkett on Saturday and uh, Trevor Wilson on Sunday Robinson dropped out of there so the Giants feel like this is a time in which they really have to make a concerted effort on all out drive to try and catch the Atlanta Braves and the L.A. Dodgers nice play by Barry Larkin and the inning is over. He knocks off Bass, and that ends. Well, we roll on into the third inning. It's been three out, three down in each uh, half inning to date. Jose Rijo, Paul McClellan, each retiring six straight. Of the six, McClellan has fanned three, and he'll be facing Martinez, Reed, and, Reed, and, uh, and Rijo here in the third for Cincinnati. Carmelo continuing uh, to get starts whether it be at first base or in left field his second straight start and left Glenn Bragg still having a problem with an elbow that has kept him down the last couple of days one ball one strike I'll tell you what Marty when you look around this red ball club they've got some folks are really beat up you figure that Jeff Reed still alien with his ribs Chris and his knees uh, you know this is a sore club. Well that's the thing we talked about in Los Angeles how uh, when you talk about injuries you talk about normally you think about people who are on the disabled list and are not able to play but that doesn't take into account as Gordy mentioned those who are playing but are not 100 percent. He had to reach for that ball off the end of the bat and Mitchell camping. Seven in a row retired by Paul McClellan and now faces Jeff Reed who is in the lineup tonight as you well know despite the bad ribs. A couple of birthday greetings we want to send out tonight celebrating a birthday today and ex and Peeper the lovely wife of Red's traveling secretary Joel has been around now a quarter of a century. That's not much mileage. <laughs> no it isn't. <laughs> when you put it that way though it sounds longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's a throw on to first and Reed is gone. Oh, Xan, happy 25th. Courtesy of your loving husband. And as we've often said in the past, ain't love grand. Yes, it sure is. Especially at 25. Two away. And the batter will be Jose Rijo. Speaking of serious, Jose Rijo takes his hitting pretty serious. And he's a good one, too. If you if you had them all healthy, obviously Chris Hammond is not. He's on the DL, but you'd have a pretty good trio of hitting pitchers in Rio and and Hammond and and Tom Browning. Uh, I guess if you rated them, you'd rate Hammond number one, Rio two, and Browning three. And Chris Hammond can just flat hit. I mean, uh, you watch him at the plate, and you can tell by a guy's actions what kind of hitter he is. He knows what he's doing. Rio, uh, he subscribes to that theory of of. Uh, Thou shalt not pass. He's just up there hacking. And he's fortunate enough. He makes contact pretty good. But yes, you are does. right, Marty. Uh, Chris Hammond has got a pretty good idea at the plate. He takes pitches and he knows his balls out too. He can hit. There he is. He's just swinging hard, hoping to hit something. You know, on the subject of hitting pitchers, and I know you saw him as we did in uh, in L.A. Don Newcomb. Serious. <laughs> Real serious. At distance too. <laughs> yes. He could really hit a baseball. He was not your normal hitting pitcher. No, he was a real good yes, hitter. Yes, sir. Rio gone. And the beat rolls on for Paul McClellan. Nine in a row. He has struck out. Uh, Cindy Browdy, the wife of uh, Reds publicity director John Browdy, her mom sitting next to her, and uh, other assorted members of uh, Cindy's family out here on the West Coast. 
and more Reds fans bundle up for the type of weather you come to expect and love here at the stick. If they stick around for nine, they'll need that. Yes, sir. Leading off the third in this nothing nothing affair is Kurt Manwaring. And there's the first hit of the ball game. First pitch, line drive hit to left field, and Jose Aribe, the shortstop, coming up. Boy, Kurt Manware has been doing their recent games very regularly, Marty. Uh, he came into this ball game 13 for 44, and uh, he's done a job for them after replacing Decker Kidd. Yeah. Aribe batting 185, as you see, seven RBIs. The one home run he has hit this year, he has hit against the Reds. And uh, they, amazingly, they've not figured out a way to consistently get Aribe out. Seems like everybody else in the National League has, given the fact that he's hitting 185, but against the Reds, batting 364. Well, he was the reason you mentioned a while ago, but putting Matt Williams at short, he's the reason because they can't find a way to, to get his bat going. Earlier today, uh, the media interested in getting Lou Pinellas' comments on the comments made by Jack Armstrong that popped up in the USA Today this morning and was as a result of an article that appeared apparently yesterday in the Nashville newspaper concerning uh, his demotion. And Armstrong, uh, after winning and beating uh, Buffalo Tuesday night 5-3, to three, said the Reds organization has to decide what its agenda is. They're not in a loyal state of mind, said Armstrong. They're making panic moves, and I happen to be one of them. These comments, mind you, coming from a guy who was 6-10 and 10 with a 588 earned run average at the time the Reds sent him down. And Lou Pinella told me, with confirmation from Stan Williams, who was in the room at the time they called Jack in to tell him he was going to Nashville, that Armstrong said when they told him he was going down, this is a good move. I need to go down and work on some things, and I understand. And now he comes up with this crap. It's unbelievable. And I might add, a guy's got to have an awful lot of nerve to have the kind of marks that he did when he was sent down to come back and speak the way he spoke after winning down at AAA on Tuesday night. It's amazing. Well, I think all you had to do, Marty, was look at his stat sheet. Absolutely. It's just unbelievable he would have the comments that he had. I guess you consider the source. And it wouldn't surprise me a bit if, uh, in the end, Jack Armstrong uh, uses the same crutch that so many of these guys use. I was misquoted. Don't discount it. Three balls and one strike on a rebay after a leadoff single here in the third by Kurt Manwaring. I'll tell you one thing. You don't want to let this guy get on, given the fact that they've already got a runner over at first with nobody out. And the pitcher coming up next. Giants would be thinking about a scoring third. So Riho avoiding a walk as he goes three and two on the San Francisco shortstop. He took a look down to third base coach Bill Fahey. Let's see what they'll do with Kurt Manwaring. Roger likes to start him, but not this time. And he walked. Him. That hurt. Boy, the one thing you don't want to do against the Giants is give them extra base runners with the middle of that lineup. First and second, nobody out, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what they're going to have McClellan doing. Put him on. He's tough to walk too, Marty, because he only had 27 walks all of last year, and 13 of those were intentional. So he he does swing. Yeah. Apparently. Bill Fahey seeing something or sensing something that he did not like because he now meets with McClellan. Rio waiting on the batter to step back in. Matt Waring at second, Aribe at first, nobody out. As the Giants pose the first threat of the night. Look at Hal Morris on the right of your screen. He is well in at first base and he's going to be coming even closer. Here he comes. Uh-oh, that's a ball. Unbelievable. I can't believe you could balk that damage. Boy, that's a costly move there. 
What are these spikes, Chet? I I would like to think that was the reason. He has dug a real hole for himself now. Watch this. Let's see what happens. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I just think he totally lost his concentration. He forgot to release the ball. That's as that's as blatant a balk as I've ever seen. I really believe that Hal Morris may have created a distraction for him. He was so close to home plate that Riho got to a point where he completely lost it. And now the Giants are really in Fat City. Larkin looks and throws him out. Boy, that's a plus. Let's see if we can interpret this again. Now, here comes Morris. Watch Morris come into the picture. Now, I'll tell you what, I had a situation like that one time in a minor league game playing in Chattanooga, but charging like that, thinking the pitcher was going to bunt. He took the button off the top of my hat. <laughs> Did he really? Yes, sir. I didn't come in that far no more. <laughs> Uh, here's Willie McGee who struck out in the first inning and that's what Rio would love to do now. He just wants to make contact. The infield is back and now that they've gotten the ground ball off the bat of the pitcher with nobody able to move they will give up the run to get an out in this situation. So if you're a Giants fan you're Roger Craig you're Willie McGee all you want to do is put the ball in play and on the ground. Second and third occupy. Just trying to spot that ball was all he was trying to do. It'll be interesting to hear Marty to see how Rio comes with this pitch because last time uh, he had him basically the same situation. He gave him a bad slider down in the end. See if Willie remembered that. Now at Taco Bell, the new snack size Fiesta menu. So run for the border. Head to Taco Bell. And worrying third, a rebase second, one away, and an 0 and 2 count on Willie McGee. Far enough. Well, as you can see, that last swing that Willie took the pitch before that, he just tries to flick the bat. He's an awful lot like Brett Butler. They don't try to really attack the ball, they just flick the bat and swat the ball. He's a man they signed when they lost Butler to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Who would you rather have? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little, little partial. Yeah, I'll cast my vote for Brett Butler also. One and two. He got it. Big strikeout. Well, I reckon that was Murray. And he's coming back pretty good here, ain't it? Second and third, no outs. Watch this pitch. Completely different pitch than the last time he got. He went away from him this time with a fastball tailing away. He's got Willie both ways, down and in and away from him. The big thing now is Gordy can't let up. How many times do you see a pitcher get two thirds of the way home and all of a sudden that next guy burning big time? Don't take that deep breath yet. No, sir. Go to work on Robbie Thompson. He got him on a fly ball to Martinez in the first. And he's hacking. Well, I'm going to tell you what, he was up in a bad zone. Yes, yeah. he was. That's one of those balls you can drive. Well, these two guys are pretty much on top of their game tonight. That being the case, you're not going to see too many balls leave. Uh, although a better shot on McClellan than you have on Rio. Jose's given up only six home runs and 129 innings of pitching, 129 and a third. One ball, one strike. Well, the Phillies have had a pretty good comeback tonight. They, in the ninth inning, in Pittsburgh, lead the Pirates six to four. Philadelphia trying to beat the Pirates for the first time since August of last year. They have not won a game against the Bucks in 1991. St. Louis doing a number on New York. Seventh inning, four to one Cardinals. We will see the Mets at Chase Stadium next weekend. Reds will be home Tuesday night for a twenty-eight doubleheader against the Atlanta Braves. That will be a series of four. Single games Wednesday and Thursday, and then back on a plane and fly to New York for just the weekend. Well, you know the totally amazing thing about the Mets and those pitchers, you wouldn't think that they'd go into extended streaks like that. That is an absolute fact. Oh, Shaybon boots it, and a run score. 
Well, Rio did what he wanted him to do. Hit it on the ground, dead at somebody, and Sabo sticks it up, and the Giants take a 1 0 lead. Ball hits right off the heel of his glove, rolls up his arm. And a little note on the stat sheet tonight. Chris Sabo had made only one error in his last 45 games. He has only six all year going into that play. That was a kiss of death. That note, courtesy of Mr. Browdy. It's like saying a guy is a 91% free throw shooter, never misses, and comes up short on that first one. So one to nothing. An unearned run. They're at the corners now, and Clark, and it's a two to nothing ball game. Run batted in. Will the thrill does it again. Going back to what you said earlier, you simply cannot give this ball club extra outs. Boy, that ball was a mistake, too. That ball was right down Broadway, and uh, Will did the rest. That certainly was not in the area where he wanted it. A two out error by Sabo paves the way for two San Francisco runs, and the Giants hope they're not done yet. Here's Kevin Mitchell. Because uh, you get the wrong man at the plate right now. Yeah. Mitchell struck out in the second, leading off the inning. Giants right now simply playing first to third. Now Houston comes up with two runs in the first inning off Ramon Martinez at Dodger Stadium. And the Dodgers now hitting off right hander Pete Harnish. That's a four game series like this one is and like the one in San Diego involving the Pods and the Braves. One and two. You know that Dodger pitching staff though Marty of recent games uh, Ray Moon has probably had the most trouble of any of their starters done. He's really been struggling. That man deserves a better fate. That should be in the dugout. With a nothing nothing ball game but a two out error by Sabo allows one run to score and the following base hit by Will Clark gets another one in. O'Neill will get to it to end the inning but the Giants score two. Steve Lamar will be alongside Gordy when we return. It's two nothing San Francisco. Hi everybody Steve Lamar with Gordy Coleman at Candlestick Park. The Giants have a two nothing lead. And Barry Larkin leading off for the Reds in the fourth inning as Cincinnati looks for its first base runner of the night. Steve, this young man basically looks like the same pitcher we saw at Riverfront. He's around the plate and head of the hitters. And baffling the Reds. Ground ball hit to shortstop. Uribe is up. He's throwing plenty of time. Ten up, ten down against Paul McClellan. You know we've talked so much about the giant offense uh, when you look at the stats in their sheet today in regards to their pitching staff boy in recent weeks they have really done a number. Well they won 18 of their last 24 and the pitchers really doing the job for the Giants at 2.87 ERA in that time. Here's the JTM National League scoreboard the Cubs come from behind and win with three in the bottom of the eighth at Wrigley Field today. Greg Harris with his second straight one to nothing shutout. Here's a swing and a foul back in our direction. Philadelphia with a lead in the ninth inning at Pittsburgh. Cardinals again doing it to the Mets, who've dropped six in a row and 13 out of 15. Astros with the lead at Los Angeles in the early going. Boy, is this cramped quarters or what up here in this booth? Well, it's, this is what you call chubby, I guess. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting on your lap. 0 oh, 2 pitch, swung on and missed. Number five for Paul McClellan. He has struck out five of the first 11. He's thrown so many split fingers. Watch this heater just blows him down with it. He's thrown so many off speed pitches and that split finger that when you throw that heater, it looks like it's about 95. This kid's got a pretty good idea out here, Steve. 
Twenty five year old Paul McClellan ready to pitch to Hal Morris. Well, when you look at his stats from last year at Triple A level, you would certainly not know that he was ready for this. No, but he uh, really turned it around this year as he started the year in the Texas League and then went on to the Pacific Coast League to Phoenix and then to the Giants. If you combine his statistics from all those stops, he has really been something this year. Way inside to Morris, a ball and a strike. But I guess his first start in the major leagues up here. When did we go with six innings with a no no? Seven, yeah, and wound up with seven scoreless innings, allowing two hits. There's a swing and a fly ball to left. Mitchell had him played perfectly. Morris is out, and so are the Reds. 12 up, 12 down against McClellan. The Giants lead it two to nothing in the middle of the fourth. Let's go and Gordy these Giants have been playing great baseball haven't they? Well, we, we talked about it earlier when Marty was over here Steve uh, they picked up 11 ball games on the Reds since the All Star break that seems almost impossible but they've done that. They really have and they picked up uh, how many on the Dodgers a ton of games seven and a half of ball games on the Dodgers just since the All Star break. Matt Williams doesn't get the first delivery Matt struck out his first time at bat tonight and that was the Eighth time he had fanned in his last 12 at bats. Well, the one thing Jose Rio's got to do here, Steve, he's got to close the door. They can't give up any more runs the way the Reds are swinging the bats. Question about it. Two strikes now to Matt Williams. They basically have struggled since last Friday night. They scored five runs down in San Diego, but since that time, boy, every run's been a struggle. On this trip, including that game Friday night. The Reds are hitting only 188 and they've scored only 12 runs in the seven ball games. This being the seventh game. Mm, tied on Matt Williams. I guess we have to give some credit where credit's due. They ran into a pitching staff then not only they certainly shuts a lot of people down, but uh, you got to have a better team batting average at 188. Yeah, they made them all look like Walter Johnson. Here's the delivery. And it's away from Williams. Two balls, two strikes. From San Francisco, let's step out. Station identification time on the Cincinnati Reds television network. Your number one sports station in Cincinnati, WLWT. Here's Rio's pitch. Foul away. Well, they're going to have a big old timers game here on Sunday. Some of the great names in Giants history, at least San Francisco Giants history, will be here. Although Alvin Dark, who goes back to the Polo Grounds days will also be here. Willie Mays, Juan Marichal, Orlando Cepeda. Oh boy. Bobby Bonds. Swing and a miss. And Rio has gotten Matt Williams for the second time. Jose now has six strikeouts tonight. Base for the Giants. Kevin Mitchell. Built the same way. That's right. They were built the same way. Here's uh, the American League uh, scoreboard for JTM. Toronto finally breaks its long losing streak, which reached seven ball games. Seattle swept that four game series against Oakland at the Kingdom, the first time the Mariners had ever swept a four game series at home. And that goes back 14 years. Chicago misses a chance to gain ground on Minnesota as the Twins were beaten tonight by California. Boston, a winner at, C at uh, Cleveland. This ball popped up back a third foul Larkin has trouble but hangs in there and makes the catch. He went a long way Steve and I'm going to tell you what this might be one of the worst ballparks in baseball to try to catch a foul ball because the currents in the air certainly has something to do with it but uh, he really went a long way that was a nice play by Barry. I thought just for fun maybe you and I could come out a little early tomorrow and <laughs> I'd hit you a few pop ups. No let's just pass on that. Let's have that extra cup of coffee and forget that <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> I thought it'd be good for a laugh anyway. Yeah, I didn't want to do that when I got paid to do it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt Manwaring, single to lead off the two run third. And the pitch missing to him, ball one. I remember the first time I tried to play ball in this ballpark, Billy Martin was at second base. It was a pop fly hit in our direction. And I think he hit both of us on the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not fun trying to catch fly balls here. Anything up in the air can be an adventure. Well, this is uh, this is a pretty calm night for Candlestick Park. Yes it is. It's a beautiful night. Right field. Paul O'Neill stationed in shallow right makes the catch. Rio sets down the side in order at the end of four the Giants. Steve Lamar and Gordy Coleman at Candlestick Park. 
As you look at Mo Sanford, Worm Winningham, and Glenn Braggs over near the Reds dugout. Paul O'Neill leads off in the fifth and takes the strike. The Reds still have not had a base runner tonight. 12 up, 12 down against Paul McClellan. Second base, Robbie Thompson throws to Will Clark, and there's one out. I'm sure the feeling on the Reds ball club was that the second time around after seeing McClellan would be a little bit easier this time, but it certainly hasn't been to this point. Here's a special Reds Network salute to nationwide insurance agent G. Michael Fahey, winner of the 1990 President's Conference Award. For all your insurance needs, call G. Michael Fahey in Wheeling, West Virginia. Chris Sabo, the hitter, struck out his first time up there. Sabo, only one hit in his last 17 trips. Got the night off last night in Los Angeles. Career-wise, Steve, he's had pretty good success against the Giants. 335 lifetime against them. Final from Detroit, the Tigers beat the White Sox 6 to 4. Lou Whitaker hit two home runs in that game. Fouled away by Sabo. I tell you what, those Tigers can hit home runs. Yes, they can. They have some free swingers on that ball club. They've really done a number because, you know, going into this, nobody gave them a chain. They've had 162 home runs now. Wow. This one has popped up. Foul off the of third. Matt Williams will make a run at it. And cannot get it. They're going to call him out. And interference. The fan came over the railing, and the umpire called out the batter. Lou Pinella is going to come out and talk about it. Here goes Lou. Okay, here it is. There it is again. Matt Williams on the dead run. Watch the fans' glove come out. Yes. No question about fan interference. The fan crosses the railing in an attack. <laughs> and you would know. You fought a few fans for foul balls. Swing and a miss. Strike one to Dory. Yeah, I fought a few fans. <laughs> <laughs> and the pitch. Bobby Thompson at second base. Out is going out of the Reds. Paul McClellan has been perfect through five innings. Middle of the fifth, two nothing, San Francisco. Followed by Paul McClellan, the pitcher, and Willie McGee. Giants with two unearned runs in the third, lead it two to nothing. Here's a strike to Uribe. One of the unfortunate things early in the ball game, Steve, when you look at the scoreboard and see that Jose Uribe is hitting 185 of the base on balls, and uh, that's a tough thing to do. Ground ball hit to Sabo. Nice play. Well, that's one out, and the pitcher comes to hit. We're having some difficulties up here in the booth, folks. We'll get it worked out in just a minute. At this point, uh, who knows? He's only hit one out of here too. I remember ball game in Cincinnati, no hit ball game that guy named Wise pitched against the Reds. He hit two that night. Rick Wise. Two strikes and the ball, one out. there playing close to the line that's two outs <laughs> Willie 
McGee up there now for the Giants with two men out and the base is empty. I believe we have all our microphone problems straightened out here. Yeah, I think we're squared. I can hear you now, partner. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You may not be, but I am. Here's the <laughs> pitch and a swing. High chopper over Sabo's head, a base hit to left for Willie McGee. That's his first hit of the night and the third hit off Jose Rio. And he just slaps the ball long enough that he will finally find a hole someplace. That's exactly what he did. The ball bounced right over Sabo's head under right. That Thompson. Well, the man on and two out. Thompson is flying to left and reached on an error. That was an error made by Sabo that opened the gates for the Giants in the third inning, allowing two unearned runs to score. One scored on the air. Another scored on a base hit by a Will Clark. Philadelphia has slowed down the Pittsburgh Pirates tonight. The Phillies beat the Pirates in Pittsburgh six to four. Another throw. McGee gets back. Two runs three hits for the Giants. No runs no hits for the Reds. The Giants right hander Paul McClellan has been perfect through five innings tonight. The pitch. And Thompson takes the strike. So nothing in one to the Giants second baseman Robbie Thompson. You mentioned that Philly win tonight. Uh, boy even though the Pirates have not fared that well in recent week uh, Steve their lead still seems to be in pretty good shape. Yeah the Cardinals and the Mets have not been able to gain ground. In fact they've lost ground. The Mets have lost a lot of ground. They haven't been playing very well at all. Two strikes as Thompson bats in the fifth inning against Rio. Boy, that's really a strange club to figure too, Steve. Because when you look at their starting rotation of pitchers, you just can't believe anything would go on as long as they're losing it. That's absolutely true. McGee, the lead at first, draws a throw. You look at our starting rotation with Viola and Cohn and Doc Gooden. We have Sid Fernandez back now after that spring training injury. There's one fouled away by Thompson. Still nothing in two. Undoubtedly one of the problems has been I guess they have trouble scoring runs over there. Yeah they really have. There's Willie McGee with the lead at first base held by Hal Morris. And Willie's back. Say remember Reds fans bank one Cincinnati. The bank that will do whatever it takes within reason. Nothing and two. Rio delivers. Outside, backhanded by Jeff Reed. The Giants right now technically trail the San Diego Padres due to the fact that the Padres behind Greg Harris shut out Atlanta one to nothing today. Giants need a win to remain in third place. A ball and two strikes. McGee leaning, draws a throw, and just does get back. Well, he sure would look like he was going to be moving, dude, didn't Stevie? Yes, Almost caught him leaning. He was leaning towards second and then just did get back to first. I tell you what, the Reds pitchers had pretty good success picking people off first base this year. Another throw, and back is McGee. I think it's uh, 25, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 25 opposing runners picked off by Reds pitchers. Another throw by Rio right on the bag, but McGee got back standing up. We're in the fifth inning. The Giants have a two to nothing lead. First of four, the Reds and the Giants at Candlestick to wind up the Cincinnati road trip. All the way. Giants making a player move today. Greg Litton placed on the disabled list, and the Giants have signed the veteran second baseman Tommy Herr. He'll be here at the ballpark in time for the ball game tomorrow night. Tommy Herr has been through some kind of wars. Has he ever? The one-two pitch away from Thompson. Two balls, two strikes. This would probably be a very good time for Willie McGee to set sail. Two strikes and two outs. Uh, why not? 
it won't want to pitch out here. Two two Rio has the side. McGee again was leaning but got back. He certainly has Rio's attention. <laughs> and McGee goes. 2 2 pitch fouled away off to the right. Well, with the prevailing winds here at Candlestick Park, this has been the scene of a lot of great pitching matchups and battles. Back in the 60s, no hitters were thrown here on back to back days. Gaylord Perry threw one for the Giants, and then Ray Walker. 16 innings, nothing to nothing. Both men went both. Went all the way, and then in the bottom of the 16th, Willie Mays homered off Spawn and the Giants, and Marichal won it one to nothing in 16 innings. They both pitched 16. They both pitched 16 innings. Boy, that was a ball game. Now they're both capable, certainly. <laughs> 2 2, McGee again draws a throw by Rio. Mentioned an old timers game Sunday. I guess Marichal's coming back for that. Marichal will be back. Light of blue. I will. May, Cepeda, McCovey, and all the rest. If he's pitching, I will be grabbing a bat. Now I can take it. <laughs> two two pits. Foul straight back. Boy, Thompson's been up there an hour and a half, it seems. Well, I'm telling you what, he's had a good at bat, and he's really fouled off some good pitches. You know, it's interesting because, you know, Robbie Thompson's had a history, Steve, of striking out an awful lot. And, uh, you know, for a second baseman, he's what, got 14 home runs now, so he hits the ball a long way. But he's uh, taking a little bit different approach to hitting there. He's trying to take the ball the other way. That is hit the other way, but foul again. And a nice play made by a fan down by the bullpen. And that was legit because there's no fielder trying to compete with him down there. <laughs> And we've seen two plays this week where the fans have been involved. That one in LA with the guy opened the gate. That's right. Opened the gate in left field in fair territory. Came <laughs> right out of the stands and picked up a ball, a fair ball down in the corner. Before Daniels got there to get it. And he was escorted from the ballpark. <laughs> Back is McGee. It's amazing. They put that thing on the board in every ballpark and he makes the announcement before the game. And if that ball gets to somebody close to him, they got to have at it, don't they? <laughs> And that fellow in L.A. acted like he'd never heard of that. That's rule. right. <laughs> and the guy beside him was so embarrassed, he covered his head up. <laughs> the 2-2 pitch, McGee going. Swung on, dribbled along the third baseline and foul. And Robbie Thompson continues to spoil the deliveries of Jose Rio. Count remains 2-2 two and two with Willie McGee at first base and two men out. The Giants... Scored twice in the third inning. They had a couple of hits. There was one big error in the inning. And a balk. 2 nothing, San Francisco. Now Rio agrees with the sign finally, but he took too long, and Thompson is granted time at home plate. It sure would be nice to get him out of here so you would have Will Clark leading off an inning rather than him with middle base. And again, Rio sends McGee back to the bag with a throw to Hal Morris. Two men out. McGee has the lead at first. And Jose is set. He goes. McGee does. And a bouncer past Rio. Doran charges up, throws. He got him in the innings over. No runs, a hit, and a man left. We'll go to the sixth and Marty Brenneman. Two to the fluids, minerals, and energy of Gatorade. Well, the Reds just started off their top half of the sixth inning with their first hit and their first run. They are now only trailing two to one as Carmelo Martinez just jerked one right at you on the first pitch of the sixth inning. Back to describe it, Marty Brenneman. Well, that's a nice way to come back. Yes, sir. He went to hacking on McClellan's first pitch and drove that bad boy way out of here. Budweiser will donate $100 for Martinez's fourth home run to Bacchus, a national collegiate on-campus student initiative working to prevent alcohol abuse. Budweiser and Bacchus, another example of how people working together can take alcohol abuse head-on and really make a difference. There's a swing, and there is the result. It was right down in there, and he deposited that baby way out of here. 
So two to one the score as the Reds first hit becomes a big one. And here's Jeff Reed. We understand and we obviously didn't get it on our TV but the Giants got it on theirs that there was a scuffle in the Reds dugout in the last inning and we get this second hand but we are told that the scuffle involved Jose Rijo and Chris Sabo. The only thing you can figure that it had something to do with Sabo booting Robbie Thompson's two out ground ball in the third or if it's not that we don't know what it was but that's what we were told that there was a confrontation in the Reds dugout involving Jose Rijo and Chris Sabo. We can get any further information on it. As we say we got that second hand and if we hear anything to the contrary if it involved other people we'll certainly pass it along to you. But without question there was something going on in the last inning in the Reds dugout. Two and two on Jeff Reed. That home run that Martinez hit by the way the fifth home run given up this season by Paul McClellan. So the Reds have trapped the deficit in half and uh, well this type of ball game is something the Reds have really grown accustomed to playing that is ones being played close to the best. We had three of them at Dodger Stadium two of the three decided by one run L.A. 3 2 on Monday night the Reds 4 3 and 10 on Tuesday night. Well, one thing Carmelo Martinez has demonstrated here on this road trip, Marty, that he can certainly hit balls out of the ballpark. He really can. He's made the most of the opportunity. And a pleasant guy. I'll tell you, he's fun to be around. He's always upbeat. He has been uh, readily accepted by the members of this ball club. Aribe will unload to Clark to take care of Jeff Reed. One out. Was whatever the reasons for the problem in the dugout if in fact it did involve Reed and uh, rather Rijo and, and Sabo and that's what we have been told uh, Jose Rijo has been rather outspoken of late he's probably been the most outspoken player on this team uh, from a standpoint of feeling like uh, without naming people he feels like that there are individuals on this club that really are not giving their all when they put it on the line every day given the fact this club has struggled so badly since the all star break there's Chris Sabo and uh, I, I certainly would hope that that little battle didn't involve those two because I don't think anybody puts out any harder all the time than that man right there. I don't think anybody will ever question his desires and his abilities and his uh, gumption and get up and go every night his name is penciled into the lineup and and by the same token the same could be said for Rio I mean there are two guys who approach the game the same way well I would certainly hope if that would be the case Marty that it wasn't over a physical error because it's almost impossible to play this game without occasionally doing it nobody in the world ever wants to do it but those things with errors uh, metal ones hey that's a different story absolutely physically it, those things just happen to happen and I think one thing you'll always hear a manager state is just what you said Gordy uh, hey uh, I'm not going to get upset about the physical errors those things happen the mental mistakes are the one that managers like Lou Pinella really get upset about and what occurred last night at Dodger Stadium her Morningham did not pick up the hit and run sign in the eighth inning and was uh, thrown out stealing or thrown out at third base uh, Chris Jones swung and missed it a pitch but it it really took the Reds out of what could have been a big inning and it simply boiled down to Winningham not seeing the sign that's the kind of thing that will get a manager's dander up that is not hustling yep two to one the score top half of the sixth inning and a one ball no strike count on Barry Larkin. That ball is hit well but unfortunately to the deepest part of the park and McGee makes a nice play. So after the Martinez home run three straight batters retired five and a half earned while we were away that the scuffle in the Reds dugout two innings ago involved Jose Rijo and Chris Sabo. We may have footage sometime uh, before the evening is out of exactly what transpired down there not knowing why it transpired but we may have a chance to take a look at it. And there's a situation for Riho, and that's what it's all about. 62 strikes, 29 balls, but already 91 pitches. Base hit for Mitchell. 
Will he run on O'Neill's arm? He will, and he will be there with a double. Yeah, Paul was playing him around towards left field naturally because he pulls so many things, and uh, there was no way you could hardly keep that from being a double. He had to come a long way to get the ball. Ball is down and away. He hits it off the end of the bat, right down the right field corner. Paul really had some ground to cover, and uh, there wasn't much he could do about it. Only the fourth hit for San Francisco, a lead of two to one. So the Giants would like to parlay that one out double out of the wrong barrel off Mitchell's bat into a run and get that two run lead back. That was a piece of a very intelligent hitting by Mitchell, Marty. The first two times that he kept the ball away from this time, he went right with it. Matt Williams. Two at bats, two strikeouts. He is in one of those things right now. Kevin Mitchell says, I don't prefer to look at him as strike uh, slumps. I don't consider myself ever in a slump. I'm just going through a bad time. Well, if that be the case, Matt Williams is in a real bad one right now. Now, he will strike out, Marty. He's had a history of that. But Young he will man, also. Yeah. <laughs> he will put a charge in one every now and then. He's hit home runs versus all the teams in the National Leagues each of the last two years. So he spreads the wealth around. Well, you know, I think a perfect ball club in the American League to attest to what we're talking about is the Detroit Tigers. I mean, they strike up more than anybody in baseball, but they also hit more home runs. Hammer City, USA, as Sparky would refer to it. Nothing into the count on Williams, so Rio trying to ring him up again. In the third, Houston two, the Dodgers one. Atlanta losing in San Diego today, one to nothing. And the Giants tonight in the sixth inning, leading the Reds two to one. Mitchell at second, one out. By you, third straight time that he struck him out. And that's going to discuss it with Bob Davis. Well, he reversed with a fastball that didn't. Watch this pitch. Look at the location where this ball is. It looked like it was off the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might have had an argument, too. He absolutely. They're going to walk Kevin Bass and take their chances against Kurt Manwaring. <laughs> Jose Rijo and Chris Sabo. You see Lou Pinella in the middle of it. This was a couple of innings ago. Lou losing his cap players all over the place trying to separate him and Lou not a happy man. This of course is obviously something born out of abject frustration over the very poor play of this ball club in the second half of the year. There's Sabo. He gets his glasses on. He got things in order and he went out to his position at third base. Unfortunate that something like that would happen tonight and I am sure that it's going to be a major topic of conversation with that man the focal point of it after the ball game. I don't know what else can happen to Lou. I tell you what uh, he's had more than his share of trouble just with, you know guys going down. Uh, this is one thing he really didn't need. No he really didn't. And. Again. Uh, Jackie Moore. Seated between Sabo and. Uh, and Jose Rio an unfortunate incident. Hatcher hoping the third time's a charm. He's been up twice and he struck out twice. One hit. That is all the Reds have had tonight, and that was a home run on the first pitch of the sixth inning from Carmelo Martinez. And the Reds still are run down. A rebay. Good glove. You know, Marty, you give him the benefit of the doubt the first time you see the pitcher, but, uh, you know, we've said so many times in the past some of the problems the Reds have had with the pitcher the first time they see him, and they've had their share. But uh, this guy, back-to-back, -back, he's doing a number on him. Yes, he is. Rio, such a well-pitched game in San Diego, lost that one one to nothing, pitching his heart out tonight and losing two to one. Here's Morris. He's Line to left and fly to left, and he bounces to Clark. And McClellan takes the ball. And you talk about playing through some problems. Uh, Hal Morris, 
Marty is really playing through some. He's really got a sore, a sore right shoulder, and he said it really doesn't feel much better even after the injection the other night with the quarter zone. Yeah, he's still playing though. Right, he is. And that, when you're a left-handed hitter, you got that front hand to do all the work for you. Uh, he's had trouble pulling that bat through. Here's O'Neill now with two out. Paul has uh, bounced to first and grounded out to second. Fifteen career home runs against the San Francisco Giants. For Paul O'Neill. One ball, one strike. Well, the big red team could sure use one right here. Absolutely they could. He of course homered last night for the only run that they scored in the seven plus innings that Tim Belcher was on the mound. He homered in the fourth inning. Only run the Reds got all night. Two balls, two strikes. But I'll tell you what, Marty, being totally honest about this thing, they found more ways to get beat in this ballpark last year. Remember yeah. that? Did not win a game here last year. They won only one here this season. He started to go, but held back in the nick of time. Big O'Neill did. Three and two. There was that split figure again. Paul held back. Number six for McClellan in the middle of the seventh. Giants by a run. Well, we take it on into the bottom half of the seventh inning. Jose Uribe has already fouled off Rijo's first pitch, and Roger Craig getting a pitcher up in his bullpen. Pitcher McClellan due up next, so he must be contemplating a possible pinch hitter here. That pitch is high for a ball. Kelly Downs, the right-hander, throwing at the moment for the Giants. In there, strike two call. Kelly Downs has reverse roles on this ball club, Marty. And he's done an excellent job as a reliever. Uh, that's another one of the factors. Here's a guy who has been basically a starter in his major league career. Comes back off the DL. They put him in the bullpen, and he's done quite a job for him. Doran picks it up and throws him out. Friends, one way to really kick off the summer is to fire up the old grill and Hop on JTM's delicious pork chopettes. Pour on the JTM barbecue sauce. I'll tell you, you won't find a better sandwich anywhere. Nothing tastes better hot off the grill than JTM burgers, chops, and steaks. Sabo with McClellan stepping in, batting for himself, although Downs continues to throw. an interesting development letting the pitcher hit and the uh, reliever throwing the ball mm -hmm. two men are out and Willie McGee due to hit so you wonder if McClellan might be done well with downs continuing to throw as Gordy pointed up it's rather odd to see a manager send the pitcher up to hit while getting a pitcher ready in the bullpen Roger Craig might be of a mind hey I've got a one run lead what's the sense in wasting a hitter in this situation I'm going to make a pitching change but I'm not going to use up a bat on my bench well he might be giving him a little head start to get loose in case he needs you because he's been done a real not real serious like he's been bull jumping right. with the guys in the pen so maybe he's not going in this anybody he's going to be ready when needed good point Willie McGee has struck out twice he bounced one over the head of a drawn in Sabo in the fifth inning for a hit one ball one strike Reds have played 33 one run games. They're 17 and 16. Sabo's got a hurry. And he does. Good play to get McGee and end the inning. Steve Lamar will be back to take you the rest of the way through seven. It's a one run game. That we could understand it. Back at Candlestick Park, Steve Lamar and Gordy Coleman were in the eighth inning, a two to one ball game. The Reds have had only one base runner all night. That was Carmelo Martinez, who had his fourth home run of the year. Chris Sabo, the batter. And McClellan misses with the first one. The Giants have right hander Kelly Downs throwing in their bullpen behind McClellan. Just in case. 
There's a swing and a foul back in our direction and out of play. Sable over two tonight and one for his last 18. Well, this would be a good time for to get things underway. The two Giants runs tonight are unearned due to an error by Sable. Back in the third inning, Sable had made only one error in his last 45 games until tonight. Here's the delivery. Outside. Two balls and a strike. Well, with this being the eighth inning in the two to one ball game, I'm sure that Roger won't stay with this young man too long in case he runs into a problem here. Two and two to Chris Sabo. He had a rip at that one, didn't he? Yes, and I'll tell you, it's one of the few balls he's had up in that area, too, Steve, because everything else he's thrown a nice bit below the waist. He really has an outstanding split finger. Fouled away by Chris, still two and two. I guess that is a new pitch, isn't it? I mean, it seems to be one that uh, gets a lot of controversy because I, a lot of folks say it creates some arm problems, but boy, I'm going to tell you what, it's one of the all time tough ones to hit. Well, it was certainly the pitch of the 80s, and it's into the 90s. Fouled away again by Sable. Chris will be followed by Bill Doran and by Carmelo Martinez. Two two McClellan ready and that one fouled away what a shooting gallery back here tonight that power Rob Dibble in the bullpen Kelly Downs working in the Giants bullpen 2 one game the Giants in front top of the eighth inning. Here it is. Fouled away again by Sable. He is really hanging in there. It's like that at bat that Robbie Thompson had earlier tonight. Reds playing their seventh game on this road trip, and they've scored a total of only 13 runs. Rios pitched an excellent game tonight, but he trails two to one. There have been only five hits in the entire ballgame. Fouled away. Sable just got a piece of that one. Steve, unfortunately, down in San Diego, Rio pitched an outstanding ball game. But again, it was lack of offense. And great pitching by Greg Harris, who shut the Reds out that night one to nothing. Harris did it again today to the Atlanta Braves. Shut them out this afternoon one to nothing. Swing and a high drive. This ball is deep in left field. Mitchell to the track. He'll have room. One out. Chris Sabo just missed it. That is a typical fly ball hit by a right handed batter to left field in Candlestick Park. Willie Mays did that every year he played out here in San Francisco and lost a lot of home runs. I tell you what I'd be willing to think that the years that he was here he probably lost 50. I'd say easily maybe 100 or 150. Valvoline National League scoreboard the Phillies break the Pirates winning streak at five. Mets lose again. And Houston leading at Los Angeles in the fourth inning. It's Harnish and Ramon Martinez there. Phil Dorn takes the strike. It's one and one. Boy, that Harnish has had a great year for a first time over in this league. Just unbelievable. I think the score we gave you uh, on that Dodger game is incorrect. Apparently uh, we showed six to four. It's actually Houston six and the Dodgers one in the fourth inning. There it is. Big game going on at Dodger Stadium. The Braves have lost to San Diego this afternoon. The Giants leading the Reds here two one. And the count to Doran two balls two strikes. Well the last couple of times there Raymond Martinez has had some problems. Yeah, if you go back uh, into June, possibly into May, he's only a 500 pitcher. And the pitch missing to Doran. The count is now three and two.
That one is lifted short left field out goes Uribe and comes Mitchell. Kevin Mitchell cannot make the catch door in a big turn will head back to first base. Steve Edball looked like he didn't know Kevin Mitchell's chest. It did look that way didn't it. Maybe we'll get another shot at it here but here's a look at it now watch Kevin Mitchell. Everybody's going for it. Kevin I guess decides he'd be the one. And it did I believe he hit off his chest. Exactly right. Nice catch Kevin. <laughs> that gives the Reds a chance. They have a man on at first and one out. How did they score that? Or have they? They have not yet scored it. Hmm. Carmelo Martinez hit a home run his last time up, accounting for the Reds' only run tonight. And their only base runner until Doran reached here in the eighth inning. They've now ruled an error on Kevin Mitchell. One and zero to Carmelo Martinez. That home run hit by Martinez was his 15th lifetime against the San Francisco Giants, more than he's hit against any other ball club, and he's hit nine of those home runs right here at Candlestick Park. I'll guarantee you enough, none of them has been cheap. That if he's done that, Doran a short lead is back easily. We're in the eight, two to one, San Francisco. McClellan keeping an eye on Bill Doran, the base runner. And the Giants are going to get more activity in their bullpen. It looks like Dave Rigetti has gotten up. Two and O. Oh. There's Rigetti in the Giants bullpen. It's interesting that bullpen, Steve, you figure that when the inning opened, Kelly Downs was warming up. He started last inning. Had him sit down and now he's got Rigetti up. Two and nothing. And a strike call to Martinez. Two and one. The Giants, two runs, four hits. The Reds, one run, one hit. Each club has made an error tonight. Martinez checking things out with the third base coach, Sam Perlazzo. And Dorn back again. Night game tomorrow night, Kip Gross and Bud Black. And then day games Saturday and Sunday. We'll have the remaining three games in the series on the Reds television network. 2 1 pitch. High, 3 and 1. That boy in the morning starts a little bit later, too, doesn't it? Half hour later. That's an unusual thing about this series. Four games, and each has a different starting time. Tomorrow night's game is a half hour later tonight. Sunday's game will be a half hour later than Saturday afternoon's game. They're just trying to confuse us. Runner goes the pitch a pie ball four. So now the Reds have the tying run in scoring position. The Reds got something going here. McClellan issuing his first walk of the night. Reds have runners at first and second and we pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds television network. Your number one candlestick park San Francisco. Jeff Reed will be the batter with two on and one out. Bill Doran at second and Carmelo Martinez at first. Here comes Roger. He has gotten the sign apparently that Rigetti is ready. Roger Craig making his way out. Paul McClellan pitched Francis over his last 10 games and he's allowed only one hit in 10 and two thirds innings in those 10 games. He's been pitching great baseball lately, Gordy. Boy, he sure has for the summer, Steve. This is his 47th appearance for them. He's won two, lost four with a 3.29, 18 saves, as you mentioned. He's pitched 54 and two thirds innings. He's given up 46 hits, 20 runs. He only has given up 20 base on balls, 34 strikeouts, and the opposition is only hitting 235 against him. He'll be facing Glenn Braggs, who's coming up as a pinch hitter for Jeff Reed. Braggs batting with two men on and one out. And there's the strike to Glenn. 
These two men are familiar with each other. Of course, Rigetti was with the Yankees and Braggs with the Milwaukee Brewers for quite a while in the American League. Carmelo Martinez at first base. Bill Doran, the lead runner at second. One man out. Well, Glenn Braggs has missed a couple of ball games, Steve, from that slide at first base. Yeah, then I guess he's really got a sore shoulder also. It was his hustle which, which led to the Reds winning that one game that they won in Los Angeles. Braggs going in head first at first base to avert a double play and allow the winning run to score that night. Strike two call to him. He's not happy with Davidson, the plate umpire. Look at the Giants picked up Rigetti over the winter, Steve, and uh, he's the all-time leader in games pitched for the New York Yankees. He was in 522 ball games over there, and he also had 224 saves for them, so he's had a pretty good career. I think he beat the record uh, held by Whitey Ford for games pitched in a Yankee uniform. Of course, Ford was a starter, Rigetti a reliever. Nothing and two. The left-hander is set. That's up high. And Bragg's checked. Rigetti ranks seventh on the all-time saves list. He has 242 of them. He's fourth among active pitchers behind only Goose Gossage, Jeff Reardon, and Lee Smith. Boy, that's pretty good company. And he holds the record for most saves lifetime by a left-handed pitcher. He broke the record held by Sparky Lyle. The pitch. Swung on and missed. Rigetti comes on and fans the pinch hitter, Glenn Braggs. Boy, that was a big out right there, Steve. Just watch this pitch. It's a breaking ball down and in. Yes, nice pitch. He came to the big leagues as a starter, didn't he? Yes, he did. Now we will get a, another pinch hitter. Chris Jones will bat for Jose Rio, who pitched an excellent game here tonight, but trails two to one and will be lifted for the pinch hitter. Yes, indeed. Rigetti did come to the big leagues as a starter and, in fact, pitched a no hitter for the New York Yankees once. I'd say he's had a pretty good career. He's been successful as a starter and, of course, as a reliever. Jose Rio leaves after pitching seven innings and allowing two unearned runs on only four hits. Well, again, he certainly does have to hang his head, Steve. His last two outings have been outstanding. Chris Jones, the pinch hitter. Reds need a big base hit with two men out in the eighth inning. They trail by a run, two to one. Dave Rigetti in relief of Paul McClellan, who gave up only one hit in seven and a third innings. That was a home run by Carmelo Martinez in the sixth. Jones fouls away the first pitch over to the Reds dugout. The rest of the series, Kip Gross and Bud Black tomorrow night. Scott Scudder and John Burkett Saturday afternoon and Sunday. A pair of left-handers, Tom Browning and Trevor Wilson. This is one of the few times I've seen Rigetti throw, Steve. Uh, I guess his history has been he's reached back and is getting it up there. Pretty good arm, strong arm pitcher. Over 90 most of his career with a fastball and a, for most of his career had a tremendous slider. The pitch. He's ahead of Chris Jones. Two strikes. That might have been it right there. Yep. Hey, Rigetti is from the San Francisco Bay Area. He went to high school and junior college down in San Jose. In fact, was a teammate of Dave Steve of the Toronto Blue Jays at San Jose City College. And his dad, uh, Rigetti's dad, played in the minor leagues. Nothing and two the pitch. Got him swinging and the inning is over. What a job by Dave Rigetti. He strikes out Braggs and Jones and Paul McClellan is one of his biggest fans. Two to one Giants in the eighth. Caps by Dave Rigetti to get out of the inning. Here's the last one. Strike three to Chris Jones and the reaction by Paul McClellan.
gave up only one hit in seven and a third innings in the starting assignment tonight. New pitcher for the Reds, Ted Power. All right, Steve, this is Ted's 48th appearance for the Reds. He has really done a great job, and recently he's retired 27 of the last 27 batters he's faced and 32 of the last 35. Ted has allowed only five hits and one run in 16 innings for an 0.56 ERA with one win and two saves over his last 10 relief appearances. So he has really done a number for the Reds. And Joe Oliver is now doing the catching for Cincinnati. Jeff Reed was lifted for a pinch hitter. Robbie Thompson leads off for the Giants with Will Clark and Kevin Mitchell to follow here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Thompson nothing for three tonight and hitting about 175 in the last couple of weeks. So he's been slumping a bat a bit and he's hitting 253 for the year. Well Ted Parrish job right here is to close the door and don't let him have any more and give the Reds one more shot. Up and in to Robbie Thompson power is coming off his longest outing of the year last Monday night in Los Angeles he went three and a third innings gave up one run one hit that was a long home run by Eddie Murray the 390th home run of Murray's career to pass Johnny Bench on the all time home run list. Ball and a strike. Giants with two runs both unearned in the third the Reds with a home run by Carmelo Martinez in the sixth it's two to one San Francisco the Giants with four hits the Reds with only one one and two as Thompson fouls the pitch back Robbie's always had a problem making contact he struck out over a hundred times several times in his career cut down the pace a little bit but he's Still likely to strike out right around the hundred mark this season. He's been 74 times right now. One two pitch. Two and two high. I tell you one thing he does for a second baseman, Steve, that there's not a whole lot of second baseman that uh, really do is drive in runs. He is a good RBI man, and you, you it's tough to find for a second baseman. Sure is. With the exception of Mr. Sandberg. Now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he is an exception. He is the ever. Three and two now to Robbie Thompson leading off in the bottom of the eighth. Will Clark waits on deck. First of a four game series in San Francisco. And this one tonight has been a beauty. That is popped up. Foul back of the plate. Oliver coming back, but has no play. I tell you what, Steve, on this entire road trip, uh, we have really seen some sterling pitching performances. We surely have. Starting out in San Diego, and then on into Los Angeles. Boy, that LA series, the Dodgers won three to two on Monday night, scoring in the bottom of the ninth. Tuesday night the Reds winning in 10 4 to 3 the Dodgers won the rubber game last night 4 to 1. Here's the pitch. Ball four. Thompson draws the walk. Giants looking for a little insurance have their leadoff man on base in the bottom of the eighth inning. And look who's coming up. Will the thrill. Here's the Valvoline American League scoreboard. The Yankees a winner today to break their losing streak. Toronto breaks its losing streak. It had lost seven in a row. Seattle sweeps a four game series from Oakland. Power knocks Will Clark off the plate. Detroit a winner over Chicago to keep pace with the Blue Jays. Boston won at Cleveland. Boy, the Texas Rangers continue to take it on the chip. They've lost five in a row, 12 of the last 17. Minnesota loses tonight against California. For the White Sox, missed out on a chance to gain ground on the Twins as Chicago also lost at Detroit. One and nothing to Will Clark. And he 
fouled that one off his foot and down he went. Well, he really drove that baby off there too, didn't he? And if you don't think that's painful, you have another thing coming. <laughs> and this is not exactly hot and humid here tonight either. <laughs> oh, right off oh, those toes. <laughs> toes a little cold in this yard tonight anyway. <laughs> Could be worse, though. Could be worse. Oh, yeah. You see the ball players with them long sleeve sweatshirt. Ball and a strike. Foul straight back. Clark had a rip. And I'm going to tell you what, Teddy might have got away with the pitch here, Steve. That ball was up in a very hittable area. Will was probably still thinking about his foot. <laughs> Dog still barking. <laughs> 2-1 Giants, bottom of the eighth, the man on, nobody out, Clark batting, Mitchell on deck, Matt Williams to follow him. Two and two. The Giants are four and two on this homestand. They swept the Dodgers over the weekend in three games. And then lost two out of three to Atlanta. They have won six of the last eight and 18 of the last 24 ball games. And here in this ballpark, since the 6th of July, the Giants are 14 and 2. The 2 2 pitch. Fouled back again and again. Clark had a rip. Coming into this ball game, Ted Power. And Will Clark have met before. Yes. Will Clark six for twelve with two taters. Ouch. Clark waits two and two. He'll wait some more. Back is Robbie Thompson. Two runs, four hits for San Francisco. A run on a hit for Cincinnati. Power is ready. Ball three. Three and two. I think there's a pretty good chance you'll see Robbie Thompson run in here. I was just going to say he's likely to take off. He's got what? 11 stolen bases, I think. 12. 12. 12 out of 16. He's second on the Giants ball club in stolen bases. It's three and two. Ripped into right field along the line. Base hit. It goes to the fence. Robbie Thompson gets the green light. He's heading home. He'll score. Three to one, Giants. Will Clark comes up with another big base hit. And he did rip that ball, too. It was a low fastball, and he went down and turned on it and hit a BB down in the corner. Robbie Thompson was running with the pitch and he scores easily. Low fastball might not even been a strike. The ball was really down. And he launches a rope right into the right field corner and with Thompson being on the move scores easily. Will Clark now has 89 RBIs to lead the league. Two of them tonight. There have been three yesterday with a pair of triples against Atlanta. And it don't get any easier with these next two hitters, Steve. Kevin Mitchell and Matt Williams. Mitchell had a good rip. One strike. Well, I'm going to tell you what. These folks don't get cheated, do they? They really go up there hacking. They swing the bats. Boy, when you add up Will Clark, Kevin Mitchell, and Matt Williams, they've hit 70 home runs this year and driven in 214 runs. Just the three of them. We're only in the middle of August. One strike in the pitch. Missed one on one. So that takes care of about 46 percent of the Giants runs driven in by Will Clark Kevin Mitchell and Matt Williams. And you figure in a course for a ball game you figure you're going to see them all about four times. Yep you are. There's a fly ball hit the right field and hit well. O'Neill backing halfway on the track to make the catch Clark tags. He will be a third. 
And you know what, Steve? He didn't even really hit that ball hard. He just got the bat down, and I saw in the afternoon paper, he uses a 35-ounce bat, so you get the head of that thing up front, he kicked like a mule. <laughs> Drove that ball to the right field fence. Now the Reds will have to draw the infield in for Matt Williams. Williams struck out three times tonight. He's now fanned ten times in his last 14 at bats. But when he comes out of this, watch out. It's not going to be pretty. Let's hope it's Monday. <laughs> not going to be pretty unless you're Matt Williams. That one fouled away. One strike. Still, even with his recent problems, Williams is hitting 349 over the past month. Here's a special Reds Network salute to nationwide insurance agent J. Frank Fargo, winner of the 1990 President's Conference Award. For all your insurance needs, call J. Frank Fargo in Martinsburg, West Virginia. The 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. The worst thing where these three hitters are concerned, Marty, is if you're a pitcher, is the fact that they can they swing so hard and you know they're going to strike out but if you make a mistake they hit mistakes just out of sight mm -hmm. and you can't throw every pitch where you want to no. and Marty's over in the other booth oh way. thanks Steve <laughs> 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 this inning switching ground ball Larkin backhands the little flip toss off balance won't get him the run scores it's four to one That's a big run, Steve, and there's no question about it. How many times have we said when you got that infield in like that, it makes a 250 hitter to 350, and there's a case of it. If Barry's back in a normal position, here it is. If he's back, it's a normal out, but he's playing in to cut off the run at the plate, and there's no play either place. So two runs have scored off Ted Power here in the eighth inning on a walk, a double, and a single. And the hitter is Kevin Baz, who's 0 for 2 with an intentional walk. Bass again this year, troubled by injuries. He had knee problems this year. Williams goes, swing and a miss. The throw by Oliver will not get him. Stolen base number three for Matt Williams. Here is Boyd. He doesn't have much of a jump. He's only about a step away from that base. We're just not having a whole lot of success throwing our base runners. Mm -hmm. Not much success at all in uh, recent weeks. Joe Oliver couldn't get him. Williams now at second. The Giants don't steal many bases. They wait for the long ball. They're next to last in the league in stolen bases. But Williams pilfered one here. Here's a ground ball wide at first. Nice play by Morris. He goes to power out at first is Bass. And Williams is now at third with two men out. That was a nice play on Hal's part. And he made a nice toss to Teddy covering. Perfect timing. A good throw up where Teddy could see it and find the bag. Kevin gets the wood on the ball. Nice play by Hal. Comes up. Turns and makes a nice throw to first base. Up where he can handle it and see the bag at the same time. And the giant catcher. Kirk Manwaring is the batter. Ball one to him. I would assume at this point, Steve, that Kurt Manwaring has basically stepped into the role as the everyday catcher because with Rio starting tonight, Kennedy does a lot of catch with right-handers, but he was in there tonight. Well, the Giants feel that Manwaring does a good job handling the pitching staff, and they've been winning with him in there. 2-0. Oh. The Giants, back on the 19th of June, just about two months ago, we're 15 games out. Right now, there's seven games behind. The Dodgers are trailing by five runs to Houston in the sixth inning tonight. So the Giants in the morning could be just six games behind. Two and nothing, the pitch. Ground ball, right side. Doran is there from the right field grass. He throws out Manwaring.